Greetings, everyone. In our previous video, we covered the depth of the working space as outlined in section 110.26, A1. Today, we will delve into the subsequent sections under 110.26, A, that pertain to the working space for electrical equipment rated at 1000 volts or less. In this video, we will explore the width of the working space and the minimum height of the working space. Without any further delay, let's delve into these captivating subjects and learn how to allocate space accordingly. As per section 110.26, A2, the minimum width of the working space in front of electrical equipment should be either the width of the equipment itself or a minimum of 762 mm, 30 inches, whichever is greater. To provide an example, let's consider a panel board with a width of 500 mm, 20 inches. In this case, the minimum width of the workspace would still be 762 mm, 30 inches. However, if the equipment's width is equal to or greater than 762 mm, 30 inches, the workspace would match the width of the equipment, as depicted in Figure 2. It's important to note that the equipment doesn't need to be centered within the clear space, but the required space must be provided. Even if it starts at one edge of the equipment and extends beyond the other side, the workspace must meet the minimum width requirement. In the case of multiple electrical equipment installed side by side, their respective working spaces are allowed to overlap with each other. Furthermore, as stated in the second sentence of section 110.26, A2, the clear workspace in front of any enclosure containing electrical equipment should be deep enough to allow doors, hinged panels, or covers on the enclosure to open at least 90 degrees. Ensuring unobstructed movement of doors or covers to the 90 degree position is especially critical for panel boards or cabinets, as it provides a safer working environment during maintenance, servicing, and inspection of electrical equipment. If electrical equipment is positioned too closely to another piece of equipment, preventing the door from opening at least 90 degrees, it can result in unsafe working conditions due to limited access to the equipment and restricted working space. Allowing for a full opening facilitates easier access and reduces potential hazards. The 90-degree requirement applies specifically to the hinged door and does not necessitate that the bolted cover be capable of swinging 90 degrees. Section 110.26, A3, pertains to the minimum height of the working space, which should extend from the floor or work platform to a height of 6.5 feet, 2 meters, or, if the equipment is taller, to the height of the equipment. For instance, if a panel board is installed on a concrete block wall with a height of 1.5 meters or 5 feet, the minimum working space height for that panel board would be 2 meters, 6.5 feet. On the other hand, if the height of the electrical equipment exceeds 2 meters, 6.5 feet, from the floor, the minimum working space height required in front of the equipment matches the height of the equipment itself. For example, if a switchboard has a height of 2,150 millimeters, 7 feet, the minimum working space height required would be the actual height of the switchboard, which is 2150 mm 7 feet. The second sentence in 110.26, A3, specifies that, within the height requirements of this section, additional equipment positioned above or below the electrical equipment may extend beyond the front of the equipment, provided that the difference in depth does not exceed 150 mm or 6 inches. For instance, Equipment associated with the electrical installation, such as wireways and pull boxes, may protrude into the dedicated workspace, but no more than 150 mm or 6 inches beyond the front of the electrical equipment that requires the designated space. The same limitation applies to raised support structures like concrete mounting pads. There is no restriction on the number of items permitted above or below the electrical equipment within the height requirements of 110.26. A3. As long as the additional equipment is associated with the electrical installation and does not extend beyond the front of the equipment by more than 6 inches. It is important to note that there is no requirement limiting the extension of electrical equipment beyond 150 mm or 6 inches in front of other associated equipment, unless the other equipment also necessitates dedicated working space. For example, consider a scenario where a wireway is installed above a switchboard. Since it is associated with the electrical installation, the wireway can be within the dedicated equipment space for the switchboard. Let's assume the wireway has a depth of 300 mm or 12 inches, while the switchboard has a depth of 500 mm or 20 inches. 
Although the switchboard extends beyond 150 mm six inches, in front of the wireway, this installation is permitted according to the regulations. The working space height section contains three exceptions. The first exception pertains to battery systems mounted on open racks, where the working space in accordance with the instructions provided by the battery manufacturer. This working space should be maintained between the highest point of a cell in the row, shelf, or ceiling located above that particular point. The second exception applies to existing dwelling units and allows for the installation of service equipment or panel boards, rated at 200 amperes or less, even if the headroom is less than 2 meters or 6.5 feet. This exception is typically applicable to crawl spaces beneath single-family houses. The third exception pertains to meters installed in meter sockets, allowing them to extend beyond other equipment. It is stated in this section that the meter socket must still comply with the regulations specified in the same section. To illustrate, let's consider a situation where a meter socket, meter base, is installed above a weatherproof panel board. Both the meter base and the outdoor panel board have a depth of 150 millimeters or 6 inches. The meter provided by the utility company extends 200 millimeters or 8 inches beyond the front of the meter base. As the meter base and panel board share the same depth, the utility company's meter extends 8 inches beyond the front of the panel board. Without the inclusion of exception number 3 in 110.26, A3, this installation would be deemed non-compliant. Nevertheless, since meters installed in meter sockets are permitted to extend beyond the panel board by more than 150 mm or 6 inches, this specific installation is deemed acceptable according to the regulations. Thank you all for watching.